Hi, this is Alex, and in this tutorial, we're going to be creating a cookie banner that's going to help uh, help us comply with the EU cookie laws. Um, basically, by displaying a drop down from the top of the screen, it's going to slide down. We're going to use jQuery to do that, uh, and we're obviously going to style it up as well uh, to look like it looks at the moment. So, I'm not going to go into the EU cookie law and tell you what it is and exactly how you must comply because I don't fully understand myself. I don't think anyone does. Uh, it's very vague, but we're going to look at the technical side of this. So if you want to go up and uh, sort of read the uh, the EU cookie law stuff and bore yourself to death, absolutely cool. Um, but by all means, everything I'm writing, everything I'm doing doesn't mean you're going to comply. So that's your responsibility. We're looking at this from a styling uh, sort of CSS, HTML, JavaScript point of view. So um, with that out of the way, this is what it does. When we refresh the page, um, we have this lovely drop down come in. We've got website content on the page. I've put this as a fixed width container. So it's going to it's gonna essentially show over the top of your content just to be a bit more prominent than if it was uh, elsewhere on the page. Um, it's also responsive. So you can see that um, it responds nicely and we sort of maintain or, or reduce the padding on the right hand side because we're using percentage based widths. Uh, we've got this nice button as well, which we're going to style up. And obviously in the back end, we're looking at uh, setting a cookie with PHP. So when I click OK Continue, the cookie banner disappears. And when I refresh the page, the cookie banner no, uh, no longer shows. So we're creating the functionality behind the scenes as well, uh, ironically, to set a cookie to say that we've clicked OK on the cookie banner and that we want to continue. So that's what we're going to be doing. Let's uh, go ahead and start coding this up. OK, so um, we're over to our our basic document markup. Um, I haven't, I'm not going to sort of write this out in the tutorial because it's fairly self-explanatory. We've got a doc type, HTML, head and body tags. We've got a paragraph in here. We're including the, uh, the Google hosted uh, jQuery uh, version, which is just here. And we are, let's just pop back to the text editor. We're including a global JavaScript file and a global CSS file. And that is here and here with nothing in at the moment because obviously uh, we're going to be writing this up. So let's take a look at what the page looks like um, as it stands. Not, you know, not much to see, nothing really happens. We just literally have a paragraph on the page. So um, the first thing we're going to do is start with building the markup. I always like to start with building the markup and then styling part in the browser, part in the CSS file. So the first thing is the overall cookie banner uh, class, which is going to help us position this at the top of the page, give it that sort of dark gray background. Um, so I'm just going to call that cookie banner with a hyphen in the middle. So I'm now going to create a container in the middle, which is going to help sort of center the content uh, and we'll get the sort of responsive feel to this. So we'll create the container within that. Uh, we're also going to create a paragraph with the text that we want to display. So I'm not going to bore you with typing this out. Um, I am literally just going to copy and paste this from what I already have. Uh, so we'll pop that in there. And what we do have is we have cookies uh, or we use cookies on this website. By using this website, we'll assume you can send to and then a link to my cookie page, which doesn't exist. And then uh, the text inside that anchor is the cookies we set. So that's the paragraph. Next thing down is the actual button that we're going to style up uh, and make look beautiful. Um, so we'll go ahead and write the markup for this. It's basically not going to be a pound sign. It's going to be um, a query string, which we're going to pick up with PHP. Uh, and that's going to be just accept hyphen cookies. And the text for that will just be OK continue um, and the class is going to be button because we're going to create a generic style for, for sort of buttons on our page. So um, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and preview this in our browser. Let's hit refresh. Lovely. So, you know, it doesn't look great, but we'll go ahead and start to sort of star this up now. Um, a few tweaks before we do that. If we head over to our global.css file, uh, I'm going to set a, a sort of font for the body uh, and we're going to star the anchor uh, anchor elements as well. So the font I'm going to set at 0.75 M's and uh, that's going to be Arial. And the anchors I'm just going to set to a color of slate gray. Uh, it's quite a nice color. So uh, here we have, you know, the aerial, aerial fonts changed and the color of the links have changed. So it uh, already looks a bit nicer. So um, 
let me just add a full stop because I've seen that and that's annoyed me. Um, cool. So um, inside of global.css, uh, global we're not going to do too much at the moment. We're going to start within the browser. So let's inspect this element. Uh, I'm using Chrome and then Chrome uh, Chrome Dev Tools. But you're more than welcome to use something like Firebug uh, if, that's, uh, if you're more comfortable with that. So the cookie banner itself, we want a background of, uh, let's say... Mm, 333, three, three, I think. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I'm going to have a position of fixed. Now, we now need to set the top and the left to zero to sort of push it up to the uh, top right hand corner. Uh, top left hand corner, sorry. So top zero and left zero. Um, and then we're going to um, set the width to 100%. So that will literally fill the, the entire top half. So, um, uh, sorry, full width uh, top. So it's not looking great at the moment, but let's paste these styles into our style sheet just so we don't lose them. So this is going to be dot cookie hyphen banner. And our styles will obviously go in there. We'll just pop an indent in there. Um, so we also want to style up the cookie banner container. Now this one's uh, this one's interesting. This is going to make it uh, make it responsive. So if we click on the container and um, well at the moment I guess you could say it's responsive but uh, this is going to make it look nice and be responsive. So um, with the container we're going to set the margin to zero auto uh, and the reason we do that as soon as we apply width that's going to send to that uh, container and if we apply a percentage base width for example 70 percent um, when we sort of open and close this the, the percentage obviously takes up the sort of relative percentage of the uh, the width of the browser or the width of the page. Uh, so we'll also go ahead and apply color to this. Um, we could style the paragraph with the color technically, uh, but I'm just going to be lazy and apply it to the entire container so that I'm sort of an off white kind of color. Uh, and I'm also going to set the padding to 15 pixels. Uh, that gives us a padding on the top, the uh, the left and all that all that kind of jazz. Cool. So let's get these styles into our style sheet. Um, inside of container and now we want to make our button look nice and pretty but what we're going to do is we're going to add this class up here so we can reuse the button um, elsewhere or we can sort of duplicate the style or anything like that so um, with regards to the button let's go ahead and make this look nice so we've got the class in here um, let's start off by giving it a background uh, and I'm going to go for a sort of light gray color I'm also going to change the color and remove the underline because we don't we don't really want that. So uh, we'll give this a color of like a dark, um, like like the same color as we gave the background, so the the design nicely blends in. And I'm going to set the text decoration to none, and that will get rid of the underline. Now we'll give it some padding. So you might want to play around with this, but I always start off with a five pixel and a ten pixel. Uh, I just find it gives a nice a nice sort of um, uh, a nice sort of padding so that will be five pixels on the left uh, the top and the bottom and 10 on the left and the right so the border radius just to make it look a little more sort of friendly we sort of rounded out the edges a little bit and i'm going to set the display to inline block now the reason i'm setting the display to inline block let me just get rid of it and let's just pull this in ah, it's not going to work like that um how can i best show this if I was to have this within the paragraph, okay, um, as we come in, things like this happen. Um, we don't want that. So if we were to have display inline block, that sort of uh, takes it away from inline and gives it an inline block star. Now you might have problems with this on IE, but uh, frankly, who cares? So um, let's put that back outside and continue with our styling. So we want a display of inline block and uh, we're also going to give it a border, an overall border, and then we're going to restyle the bottom border. So I'm going to give it a border of sort of a dark gray and then a border bottom of the same color, but two or three pixels. Uh, three might look nicer. No, two is fine. So that's given it sort of like a nice, uh, it's a flat but 3D look, I think. So. Um, Let's go ahead and copy these styles into our style sheet. So we paste that in there and just indent that. Perfect. So we now have our uh, our sort of drop down styled. So now what we're going to do is we are going to actually apply the jQuery to this um, in our JavaScript file 
to actually make this uh, slide down. So fairly straightforward. All we're going to do is we're going to check if um, this cookie banner element exists. If the cookie um, uh, banner element exists, we're going to just literally slide it down. We, we just apply the slide down method, the jQuery method. So in global.js, we have a quick if statement and we say, grab the selector, which will be dot cookie banner. So if that dot length, which is a handy way of just detecting, does this element exist? Um, in that case, we want to say cookie banner dot slide down. And then we give it a millisecond count, which I'll just do at about 800. Now this isn't actually going to work. And the reason being is that what we need to do is initially hide our um, cookie banner. So we'll set a display of none. We can't slide something down that or is already there. So now when I refresh, we get this slide down effect. Perfect. So looks good, but OK continue doesn't actually do anything. It appends this query string onto the URL, but we're not actually handling anything with PHP yet. So um, in the next part of the video, we will be actually doing the PHP side of stuff and, uh, and allowing this cookie banner to be um, sort of gotten rid of.